Hello. Hi, in a recent video, if you haven't seen it, which I'll link in, we uh, repaired an Arlec um, heater and, spoiler alert, uh, it turned out to be a failed X2 uh, cl class metallized uh, poly put the kettle on uh, filter capacitor, or in this particular case it was used as a dropper resistor for a Zener. And by the way, don't mind the uh, voice and music in the background, if you can hear it, I'm just like on hold with a bank. So yeah, it's going to take an hour, so I thought I'd shoot a video. So that was this one here, and um, I tried to get a replacement one from another uh, power supply, and it was a Corsair VS650 uh, power supply which had uh, failed, and no, this wasn't the reason uh, for the fail, um, but I got the actually the exact same one out of it, and both of these had drastically dropped in capacitance, and that's to be expected if they've been surged overload because that's how metallized self-healing polypropylene uh, poly put the kettle on capacitors actually um, work if you put an impulse into them then they'll get a little energy discharge inside of there which will then uh, have a little plasma arc and it'll just vaporize the metal and then it uh, it won't short out because that metal's vaporized it'll actually just form an insulative hole there and it retains its capacitance so it won't short out but do this too many times and you lose too much square area of your capacitance and uh, that's how these self healing caps work. Anyway, a few people asked could I actually take these apart, put them under the microscope and see if we can see any damage? Well, um, I don't know is the answer. I guess we'll find out. So before we get medieval on SARS, we'll just measure it here. Here's the uh, failed one from the Arlec uh, heater at one kilohertz, 103.5 nanofarads. So that's less than half of the 220 uh, nanofarad uh, nominal value in there. And the other one is absolutely plummeted to 19.2 nanofarads. Wow, more than the order of magnitude. And the ESR's up to, you know, oh, look, it's all over the shop. There you are, the ESR's better at uh, 100 kilohertz. So I'm just testing this on a good one. This is a, uh, got this from uh, JCAR, this is a suntan. I took the side off it there, and you can see that, yeah, it's pretty well, the potting compound is gone all the way in there. Anyway, I forgot to tell you this is a uh, UTX brand and we do actually have uh, the data sheet uh, for this one that we're going to attempt to tear down. It's in Chinese, but we get the deal. In this particular case, it's a polypropylene uh, jobby. So they're metal, uh, metallized film. They just call them film capacitors is the, uh, is the generic uh, name. And it's got a metal sputtered layer on, in this particular case, the polypropylene film. And there we go. So we expect it to be wrapped in there like that. The interesting thing is, is that you can actually get different failure characteristics, internal plasma um, arcing in there, um, when they're tightly wrapped or loosely wrapped. So a tighter wrapping actually gives you a different effect um, in the way that these things fail, apparently. So yeah, that's interesting. So, you know, a smaller one like this, a 224, they might be the same voltage rating, but a uh, 220 nanofarad in this size might act and survive very differently to a, a, the same one here, 220 nanofarads in a much larger size, because this could have a thicker metal layer and a larger, but or a less tight um, wrap in there. So less tight pressure uh, between the metallized um, uh, surfaces. So yeah, um, it can make a difference apparently. Well, there you have it. I just uh, accidentally broke that off. So that answers that. Yep, they are rolled exactly like I suspected. Don't know why the wrap looks like that. It's got, maybe that's just part of the foil manufacturing process, but you can see that's got stripes on there, which makes it look like, you know, it's stacked in this direction, like this. It's like a one stack, two stacks, but it, it, it doesn't. You can clearly see the wraps in there. So maybe that's the way to do this, sort of tear the legs off. Looks like we haven't done too much damage, right? So I'm just testing how to get these things apart. And then looks like that has a contact which then goes over into the middle. Okay, so let's get medieval. Oh, I can't. <laughs> nope, I know. <laughs> We're gonna need a bigger boat. The potting is too good. The way I did it last time is to kind of like, you know, get in there like that, but yeah. This potting hasn't really taken to the foil, so potentially... Ah, yeah, there we go. We can actually get this off. Ah, oh, Bobby Dazzler. Look at that. 
All right, so you just have to be gentle getting the end plates off, although the damage is not going to be in the ends. It's going to be in the middle somewhere. So I assume there's nothing but pressure holding them together. I don't think they'd apply an adhesive when they wrap them. I think they just wrap them and Bob's your uncle. All right, can we see where the wrap starts? Is that is that it? So that's an additional plastic wrap. Maybe we can, okay, yeah, we can get under all that. Don't worry, I'm not going to stab myself. I am a professional. Ah, oh, okay, there we go. Is it starting to look metalized? See, if I put a bit of light under that, you can see, ah, oh, it's starting to get more metalized, isn't it? Look, it's just getting more and more. That's, that's interesting. So you've got to remember, this is a brand newie that I pulled apart, okay? So this one should not have any fails. Finally got through to the bank, by the way. Uh, have a look here. I put some gloves on. So now, you know, that's not the metalized layer I expect, right? But there's obviously something. I expected like a solid not, not to be able to see through it at all. So you could say that it's getting more and more. Maybe we're not actually into the cap. That's just not what I was expecting at all. Rolling, rolling, rolling. And wow, oh, here we go. This is what we expect, there you go. So several layers in. Oh, whoa, hello. <laughs> it's like you got like bad toner or something like that. Um, yeah, you really have to have the light behind here. There's um, stripes, by the way. That's just my um, adjustable color temperature um, studio light. And turn it all the way blue. Look at that. Isn't that neat? Ah, oh, here we go. Come on. Is that just another? Oh, no. No, that's uh, okay. Oh, hang on. Oh, the, oh it ripped. Very thin pro polypropylene layers. Oh god, it's doing it again. No, it just keeps, just keeps going, keeps tearing like that. Yes, yeah, it's getting frustrating. <laughs> Am I back onto a perfect roll now? Yeah, you can see one metal layer, there's some pullback there, and this is in the construction. You can see it in the color there. But yeah, they do actually tell you the pullback distance in some data sheet. It has a specific name. I'll spare you the gory details. Yeah, I'm curious to see what happens when it gets to the middle, I presume that there's a some sort of small core it starts on. Unfortunately, unless you start the unrolling process perfectly, then you're going to come a gutter. Haven't peeled off this these side bits properly, so ah uh, yeah, really ripped it as I've, so that really wasn't, wasn't the way to go about it, was it? We're not done yet, folks. <laughs> That's not all, folks. Um, no, we have to keep going. That's one side, and then the other. You can see the other side clearly poking through there. So, and then, and then you can see the polyprop film. You can see the reflection, the polyprop film on top of that. So they manufacture this as a completely insulated thing. It's almost like powdery, isn't it? It's gonna be really interesting to open the um, dead one and see how it drops that amount of capacitance. It must have like, I, I can't imagine how many like huge holes it must have in there. When you talk about these things, you know, blowing holes in them and self healing and stuff, it has to be on a small scale. I've still got a ton of wrap left in here. Oh, it's torn again. It's hard to unroll these things without tearing. You're getting the idea of what's inside one of these puppies. Okay, well, I certainly don't need these gloves. It's, it all seems very clean, so that's good. Still going. It doesn't end. It does not end. This is too much fun. There's an art to unrolling these, and I don't have it yet. This is my first one. <laughs> I'm losing the will to live. Help me, Larry. Help me. <laughs> you have to be in on the dumpster joke on Twitter to know who Larry is. Well, you can't say you're not getting your money's worth in your capacitor. Oh, I can't, oh, come on. There's, there's got to be nothing left in there. There's more layers. No, nah, I, th I, I think we're done. I can have a go at uh, taking apart the failed one. Like surely if it's lost half of its capacitance, right? You'd expect to see tons of like huge blowholes in this foil. Um, because it's a, you know, it's a wrap. Like it, it, it's a square surface area thing. This is gonna be intriguing. I don't know how you can lose half the capacitance in there. Okay, so here's the UTX one that's lost half of its uh, capacitance. So this is the uh, one from the heater. Gonna have a crack, literally. There we go. Of course, they're all gonna have varying amounts of potting and stuff like that, but there you go. It's basically the same construction as the other one. So these are different brands. 
really adheres to the uh, casing way better than the other one. This one seems like bonded. You can see here how they do the end contact, and uh, this is called Shoopage, uh, named after Max Shoop. It's kind of like a pasty mixture kind of stuff that um, gets put after they put the wrapping on, and then the contacts extend all the way to the um, edge of the film on each uh, side of it. So you've got one that extends all the way over here, one that extends all the way here. You've seen that before with that um, overlap um, gap. Uh, thing in in the film and then um, all this paste which is uh, it used to be like a, um, a tin lead um, kind of just like a solder uh, paste but of course ROS compliance they don't have the lead anymore so it's like a tin zinc or something aluminium uh, maybe and yeah they mix all this stuff together it becomes I believe some sort of like a pasty type thing and you can see the film in here but you can see how the end here this has actually formed all the impression here because it's it's just got inside each like wrap of the film and it's just it's just peeled off like this but this is how they do the end contact there's not just one end contact point because if there was then you'd have the giant uh, you know <laughs> roll like this and then you'd have huge self inductance in there this is why each layer is effectively um, stacked so that uh, yeah you get low inductance um, in these capacitors so that's how you can uh, lower the manufacturing cost of this of course by uh, wrapping things when you have machines that rotate and wrap it's you know it's very once you've got that refined it's you know it's very quick and easy to uh, manufacture like huge number of plates like this but this is how they make contact and uh, yeah that stuff just peels off when you actually break that so you know this is the uh, poly carbonate uh, poly put the kettle on film and it just sort of gets in between all the gaps and then the pin is just uh, embedded in that as well and they probably you know bake it at a temperature and uh, do whatever um, to make it um, set in there but there you have it that's shoopage and that's why it appears to break off very cleanly like this because like it kind of sort of adheres to the metal uh, layers that are on there but when you break it apart it's just quite soft and it just boom, it looks like it it's like just totally sheared off it's just just peeled away from the plastic film and then the metal layer inside there <laughs> it's neat really neat process I like it shoopage that's that's too perfect I've got the same stripe effect nothing looks as good on camera as it does with your mark one eyeball I think we're gonna have to sacrifice some outer layers here needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few same sort of thing or well, much different secret source between the manufacturers it's interesting how it oh yeah there we go Whoa, surely that's, oh, is this what we're, is this it? Is this it? This is very consistent, look at this. Look at this, wow. Oh, ha, ha. hello. This is all the way through, this is not my, oh, maybe that cut, oh, that cut there. That, that, that could have been my knife, but look, wow, look at, that. whoa, look at that. Huge hole there. But it's interesting, this strip down, like this looks like, I don't know, ink blots, right? If you're a psychologist, how do you feel, Dave? Tell me about your mother. What's the first thing you see in these ink, in these ink blots? <laughs> it's unusual that this pattern is consistent all the way through. What the heck? And look, we got tearing again. Surely I didn't gouge it that much. Yeah, maybe I dug into it there. Okay. What's all this squiggly stuff in the middle it's almost like it's split so we're getting smaller and smaller gouges that's what we'd expect until they go away so that's that's obviously my uh, heavy-handed medieval technique this pattern is still all the way through it if you want to see the other side looks exactly the same okay so this one's lost half of its capacitance this is not what I expected like, if I expected, you know, I thought, surely we'll maybe see something. But I, I really didn't know what to expect, but it certainly wasn't this. But also, all of this blotchy stuff here is another thing, right? That, like, that's another thing entirely. We just did not see that on the good capacitor. But once again, you need, like, a control capacitor. The same model, the same brand, everything to pull apart. But there's something, like, that is just weird. Here's like the blow, here's like the holes, you know, but unfortunately we can't get that film apart, right? There's nothing visible on the surface. So whatever's happening, it's happening inside the film. That this is all blotchy and there's holes everywhere, right? 
And thanks to one of my viewers, Elakami Wolf, who saw my live show where I uh, previewed some of this um, <laughs> teardown. Check out his uh, channel here. It's um, it's actually really good. At only 153 subs, it deserves a lot more subs. There's like great teardowns and all sorts of stuff on here. So I'll link in down below. He um, actually had the exact same UTX branded cap and pulled it apart. And this is what we get. And this is like more kind of what I expected. I expected like big sort of like, you know, blow chip chunks taken out of it, you know, from like the impulses and stuff. But you can see it's very sort of blotchy in there as well. And here's another shot here. And this is, you know, kind of what I expected, like big chunks taken out. But he's unsure whether or not it might have been the peel-in process or something like that. But yeah, it's anyway, it is very different, even though exact same brand uh, and model cap as my one. And I've got that wiggle wiggle yeah through the middle of it we don't see any of that here but uh yeah he's unsure if this was like um like when teared the um film apart and like it just like peeled off blotchy and stuff like that anyway it's very interesting thank you very much that is quite different to my one doesn't look like anything's jumped through the uh the top and bottom polypropylene layer Whatever's happening is happening within, you know, how they manufacture the the reel like this. Um, you know, so they make it that that that's your capacitor. But it's all to do with the difference between these two. But why is it all blotchy? And and the squiggly lines. It's just all the way through. Did I physically stress it? And it's and it's torn. It stretched the polyprop, and that's cracked. The metalization was that done due to my heavy handedness it's hard to see how it would be all wiggly wiggly yeah like that and also that doesn't explain the blotches so so all i can tell you this is certainly very different to the control one that suntan brand to be 100 percent sure though i would need another utx brand perfect i i tore it there and you can i separated the layers look at all those blowholes wow Gotcha, right? Surely that has to be what happens. But um, yeah, like when I did my last video, I I published that. Yeah, it's actually it, like it forms a little plasma in there when it over arcs because it, it vaporizes the metal and it looks like it does vaporize the metal. And that causes a, a decay in your capacitance, but it doesn't short out. It just blows these things are like it just like the metal's just gone right the metal's just vaporized away and there's just uh, pressure in there and it just i don't know how it escapes but it's just right it's vaporized away and this is the self-healing nature of these capacitors the last thing you want right your capacitors <laughs> if it shorts out right <laughs> bingo your uh, product's going to go bang -ski, right when they get an impulse like this it damages them and causes a degradation in the capacitance that is clear as day. Wow. That crack though, like all the way. Crack all the way. I don't know. Leave it in the comments if you can explain that. Uh, in fact, I do have access to a capacitor expert. I might ask him. These are just like Kayama size blowholes. This is insane. But then again, to lose half the capacitance, I like, you really have to lose like half your material. Here's the next victim. This is from the Corsair uh, power supply and it's exactly the same capacitor, exactly the same model. Everything's uh, the same, I believe. So apples to apples comparison, but this one has lost over 90% of its capacitance. So the other one we saw, you know, roughly half the material was missing. Will we see like 90% of the metal missing from this one? Let's find out. There's our layers. We're getting into the good stuff. The crack again. Look at this. But the crack is bigger. Maybe that's just tearing from the unwrapping process. It just seems weird that it's like only a small section though. Doesn't seem right. I mean, look, there's hardly anything left in here. But that's, whoa, yeah. So we just separated, separated the two layers there. Maybe I've unrolled the wrong layers, but then you've just got, you know, holes like that. And... What the heck? You know, like this, this is not peeled off somewhere else, right? There's no matching thing on the other side. So it's almost as if this has happened within the film. But yeah, it's got this weird cracking. Like there's just nothing left in there. Look, how does this have any capacitance at all? It's got that weird 
gap all the way down. I can't see how that's a result of me unraveling this. Anyway, I think we've uh, seen enough. I think it's time to uh, phone a friend, phone an expert, and um, see what they have to say about this. Okay, well, as it turns out, it looks like I'm wrong. So we have an expert here who's joining us, uh, Ron Demko from AVX. Thank you, Ron. You're going to tell us what I've got wrong, because I thought this was a self-healing issue, but you don't think so. Yeah, I think we could, we could give you some details on, on the real event. All right, thank you. So what's your role at um, AVX? How long have you been there? Well, I just passed 40 years. And Whoa. So I've been here for a while. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's funny, though, because the company changes. So every three or four years, we buy a new division. So at one point in time, it was just capacitors. Now it's antennas, connectors, uh, modules, a whole bunch of other things. So, yeah. Right. I work in a small group in R&D, and we do engineering support, things like that. Got it. But you're mostly, but you're the capacitor guy, right? You're in the capacitor. Yes. Yep. That's your specialty. 40 years yes. in, ca 40 years in capacitors? Uh, well, yeah. Different types. Glass, tantalum, electrolytic, ceramics. Tell us your opinion. What am I seeing here? What, what do you well, think this problem is? Because you don't think that it is uh, being destroyed by impulses on the mains. That's right. Yeah. Well, I think... We, we should start going back and looking at the parts. So mainly these parts are our non-hermetic. Um, they're using a low-cost epoxy. So, you know, they're very cost-effective, easy to use, easy to choose. So it's a probability that moisture got in in the application. And then that moisture was trapped with that non-hermetic case. So mm. what we have, well, there's also another scenario. There could be poor drying in the manufacturing process and possibly materials were, uh, uh, you know, water was put in there. That's very unlikely. So I think what we've got is uh, a couple of easy explanations. Uh, of course, those small holes, or maybe mm -hmm. the big hole that, that you have up on the upper right there, right. is that's a result of actually self-healing. Okay. So that's the vaporization, as mm -hmm. you'd expect. Now, when we start getting into the other area, we, we could explain things kind of easily. Um, as you roll this thing out from the left to right or right to left, you've noticed that there's a variance. Some of that variance is due to the difference and the connectivity from the shoopage on the termination mm -hmm. to the actual electrode. So uh, at one point in the video, you showed a very light uh, background with some speckled um, you know, scenarios, and that was just moisture and a high resistance scenario. But right. what we're seeing here is in the 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 crack lines, uh, the the lightning bolt looking thing. Yeah, right. that goes right. That that almost went through the whole thing. You have this electro um, well, this this reaction of of the moisture, and what's occurring is that you're getting a uh, a, a moisture effect that's actually causing the electrodes to change. Uh, they're getting more resistive. They're getting some uh, some migration or movement, oxidations, changing resistances. So those voids are most likely, to some extent, like a micro healing or a uh, impulse degradation. Uh, that's how I'd explain that lighter center section. Mm -hmm. And the darker blotches are yeah, most these. likely a result. Yes. Yeah. yeah those are going to be most likely a result of end termination corona type uh, effects, something on that order. Um, so it's always difficult to uh, comment maybe, what, 15, 20,000 miles away or so, <laughs> yep. right? but, um, and not having dealt with the parts. But I think that's pretty much the scenario. It's definitely a moisture event. So will the moisture like eat away at the metal? Will it like yes. actually corrode the metal? And what, what sort of metal are we talking about here for the metallization layers? Well, in some cases there, there's zinc, but this most likely is not the case. It's usually alumina. It's probably on the order of 100 angstroms. Uh, the dielectric thickness itself, so the film itself is probably mm -hmm. in the order of maybe one to 20 microns, something like that. So it, it's a wonderful part when they work well. <laughs> And I suppose it worked in a sense. <laughs> it worked. But, uh, 
Well, this Probably. one is only a year old. See, that's the thing. That's why, because when when I think of moisture ingress, all I think of is like old school reefer paper capacitors, which are famous for you know getting moisture ingress. They crack, the cases crack, moisture gets in, it is absorbed by the paper, and then when you go switch it on, you've got this big conductive path that just goes boom and the magic smoke escapes. Um, I, I just didn't expect that this that moisture ingress with film caps after like a year in, you know, it's it, the actual product it came from is only a year old. Yeah. I can make a couple of guesses on where the um, moisture came in. And, and that's a yep. big issue. Choosing the right epoxy mm -hmm. is, is tough. And, and I'm sure these guys build great capacitors. It, it, uh, it could happen to anyone, but uh, the right material systems, the, the it's a it's a real secret right yeah and is that something you can test like after you've yes. constructed them yes that's a very good point so how do you do that what we could do yeah we we'd put them out a moisture humidity test uh mm -hmm. you maybe maybe it would be good to have 40 degrees c and i don't know 40 percent rh and maybe another 40 degrees c and and an 80 percent rh brittle of humidity cell and then do an 85 85 cell and mm -hmm. what we would look at, we would look at the degradation of capacitance across time. And that would tell us a lot of things about uh, what's happening within the device. Mm -hmm. uh, then we'd probably go in with EDX and we would do some uh, X-ray uh, eva evaluations of, of where the material systems have broken down and, and constituency of water, et cetera. Because as you said, some of those small little points in there might be self-healing. Is that certain? Those that is, is, is that the size of hole you'd expect from self-healing as from an impulse thing? Yes. Yeah, it's right. pretty neat too to, uh, to throw these on a sample scope and, and apply, a, I don't know, a, a couple of different signals to them. Mm -hmm. And you'd actually see some noise occurring when we have self-healing events. So that'd be a neat, uh, I don't know. Noise? What sort something. of noise are you talking about? Well, you'd actually, you know, apply maybe full voltage at at maybe a moderately high temperature and you might actually see some failures punching through and mm -hmm. you'd actually see some variation in the applied voltage of the part as this thing coronas so right. when when you get those little micro uh healing points you actually vaporize that electrode material mm -hmm. and as it cools it precipitates around that failure site so if we could blow this up a little bit more with a SAM or something like that, we yep. actually see a little dark halo around that white point of failures. So this large hole here, I don't think that's a blow, I don't think that's a self-healing blow hole, would it? Would you get one that large? Well, you could. It depends what hits it. I think that's maybe more unlikely. Maybe I've now, torn it some... there. Is it possible yes. that I've torn this when I've taken it apart? Yeah. yeah, I think he did a good job on the DPA, but I think we might have approached it a little bit differently. Right, okay. So, well, it was my first time, a, okay. Oh, you did good. We'd still hire uh, you. So when you, like the ones that we're, we tore down here, where's the ceiling point? Is it the potting? Is it when, when they potted? Is that what they're trying to do? Is that they're trying to seal it as best they can? Yes, yes. Uh, it would possibly be at the perimeter of the metallization to right. the uh, encapsulant. Right. Okay. And then through the sh uh, shoopage on the side, really, it'd come in through the yes. side. It wouldn't come in through the actual film wrap, would it? Because I would yes. imagine that that's pretty sealed. It's correct. That's correct. Right. It would be at the interface of shoopage or some uh, errors or voids in shoopage. Thank you very much, Ron. This has been uh, awesome. Um, <laughs> I was completely wrong. I just went into this video with the mindset that it's all self-healing and I didn't think about moisture. Who knew? <laughs> right? <It's, laughs> th th this is going to be a surprise to a lot of people, I think. Well, that, I um, it's a good yeah, surprise. <laughs> it's, no, no. Well, it, it it's something to think about. Um, is like, should, as electronics designers, should we avoid you know, if we're using them in these sorts of applications, um, where like a, a capacitive dropper, should we avoid like a no-name brand sourced cap for this reason? Oh, or are they all pretty good? I, <laughs> or I don't know all... if I could comment on no, that. No, you can't comment? Okay. <laughs> Just... But I'd have to say films are a good yep. part to use and it's probably right. a great application for that. Well, all right. It's been awesome. Thank you very much, Ron.